Hi all, good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you are beginning this lecture. Um, my name is Isabella Sebastiani. I hope you are having a great day and welcome to our discussion on John Bowlby, Mary Ainsworth, and attachment theory. Attachment theory happens to be one of my absolute favorite topics in child development, and I'm so excited for the opportunity to share with you what attachment is and how it may have affected your life. Similar to the last mini lecture, I want to note that a phone with a camera that reads QR codes is recommended to get the most out of this experience. If that is not possible for you, then you can open the PowerPoint that I am presenting on and click the QR code, which should take you to an external page, aka the Padlet. Um, I will demonstrate this for you in a couple of slides. Uh, so sit back, get comfy, take breaks when needed, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Today, we will be focusing on who John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth are, their contributions to attachment theory, and what the attachment theory is and how it relates to your work with children. As always, I have our learning objectives listed here, which are to show understanding through explanation of who John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth are and their contributions to attachment theory, to explain the strange situation and give examples of attachment styles, possibly relating to your own attachment styles, to understand and explain what may hinder infant attachment, um, secure infant attachment, and to encourage reflection on your own attachment styles as a child and how that has affected you now as an adult. By the end of this PowerPoint, you should be able to show understanding through explanation of who John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth are and their contributions to attachment theory. You should also be able to explain and give examples of the strange situation and different attachment styles. You should be able to identify hindering factors of attachment. And finally, you should reflect on your own attachment styles as a, as a child and how that has affected you and your behaviors currently. Objectives are meant to guide you through your learning process and are ways to measure your own learning. Throughout the lecture, you will have opportunities to self-reflect as well as answer some guiding discussion questions on the Padlet. It is important to me that everyone feels safe and healthy while we talk about attachment. I know this topic can bring up unwanted memories of trauma, so please, if you cannot continue watching the lecture, I encourage you to do what is best for you and your mental health. You don't have to let me know that you didn't complete it. Um, I just want everybody to generally understand what attachment is, but I know some of these reflection questions can bring up a lot of unwanted memories. Um, so please do what is best for you. You don't have to continue watching this lecture. This is kind of like a trigger warning. Um, I am here to support your learning experience in any way possible. And if you have any further questions or just want to chat more about attachment or your experiences, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, as always, I have my open office hours as well as our Wednesday meetings as well as just email me if any of those don't work and I will make the time for you. Okay, so with that aside, I wanted to start off today with a reflection on what kind of relationship you had with your primary caregiver or caregivers growing up. So now your primary caregiver is the person who took the most care of you growing up. What was that relationship like? We will be discussing how this relationship affects who we are today. So please pause the video, take a couple of minutes to personally reflect on this question. And when you are ready to continue, you may press play. I'm gonna give you like a couple of seconds to press pause. As we will discuss in the next few slides, John Bowlby's attachment theory states that the proximity of an attachment figure provides a secure base for exploration. 
this human to human relationship, also known as attachment. So attachment is a human to human relationship, the bond between a human and another human. This attachment provides the base for emotional learning and development of a child in the first three years of life. Through attachments, the child understands how people are with each other and how the child should think about their self and what they should expect from other people. So through attachment, children learn who they are and what should be expected from other people. So later on, we'll get more into like insecure and secure attachments. So if you have a good, healthy attachment, that child's going to have a good, healthy self-image of themselves and expect other people to help them when needed. Whereas a child with an insecure attachment may not have a very good and secure image of themselves and may be very mistrusting of people. And that is really, really scary, especially for an infant, toddler, um, just little children growing up and understanding that the world cannot be trusted when really it should be that the people around them cannot be trusted. And that is not healthy. That leads to some problems later on or may lead to some problems later on. Um, so it's really, really important that we understand attachment and secure and insecure attachments um, because how we understand attachment helps us to help children who we may see has have an insecure attachment um, as a caregiver. And it helps us form and are, to be mindful to form secure attachments with the children that we are caring for. Before we discuss the work of Bowlby and Ainsworth, we must first understand attachment. Attachment is the type of bond you have with other people who are close in your life. For infants, attachment is the bond and relationship between infants and typically a primary caregiver. And like I said, when I say primary caregiver, I mean the person or people who are taking care of the infant most. Attachment takes about two months for an infant under the age of one to form. So anybody, any infant under the age of one, it takes about two months for them to form an attachment with another being. Attachments are always formed. Um, meaning that everybody has attachments. Some of those can be secure, some of those can be insecure, but everybody has attachments with their primary caregivers, with their friends, with their families, that they are repeatedly seeing and interacting with. Caregivers can facilitate attachment through sensitive and responsive caregiving. However, it is important to be perfectly attuned and responsive to an infant's every needs. I also want to mention that attachment styles can change throughout life. So you could have been born with a secure attachment style to your primary caregiver, and throughout that life, that primary caregiver has shown to not be trusted, has shown you that they cannot be trusted, and then that secure attachment turns into insecure or vice versa. Um, so attachment is super duper flexible. It can change throughout the lifetime um, and is the bond between a human and a human. So I mentioned earlier that Caregivers can facilitate attachment through sensitive and responsive caregiving. However, it is impossible to be perfectly attuned and responsive to an infant's every needs. This is where rupture and repair comes into play, which is the belief that attachments can and will be ruptured. They will get little tears every now and then, but as long as the caregiver apologizes for their mistake and continues to be there for the infant and child, then those little tears can be repaired and even fortified. So it's impossible to be absolutely perfect. There's going to be little tears in attachment throughout the lifetime. And as long as those tears are apologized for, talked about, and that primary caregiver, that attachment figure is always there for the child when they need them, it's all good. 
Um, so isn't that like super cool? So another super cool thing about attachment is that each relationship has its own attachment style. For example, I was securely attached with my mom growing up, but in insecurely attached with my dad growing up. So like I said earlier, you form attachments with those around you. Those attachments can look different with each person um, and they can also change with each person. So for me, eventually through therapy as an adult, I have been able to form secure attachments with both my parents as an adult. But it took me knowing about attachment, actively talking to a therapist, actively seeking discomfort and uncomfortable relationships with my father to then maintain and create a secure attachment with him. Just wanted to mention that I meant uncomfortable conversations, not relationships. John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth played a pivotal role in our current understanding of attachment. John Bowlby was a 20th century British psychologist, psychiatrist, and psychoanalyst who is best known as the originator of attachment theory, which explains the innate need in young children to develop a close emotional bond with their caregiver. John Bowlby aimed to further understand and investigate this observed phenomenon, contributing priceless knowledge to the child development field through the communication of his attachment theory. Mary Ainsworth is an American Canadian developmental psychologist who is known for her structured observation technique known as the strange situation and the development of the different types of attachment styles. She is also credited for her contributions and introduction of the secure base to Bowlby. During Ainsworth's study of infant mother attachment patterns, she devised the strange situation which assessed an infant's personal attachment behavior by evoking the infant's reaction when encountering stress. Through the strange situation, Ainsworth was able to identify three main attachment styles, secure, anxious ambivalent, and anxious avoidant attachment styles. Once again, that is secure, anxious ambivalent, and anxious avoidant attachment styles. Bowlby and Ainsworth worked together investigating the effects of maternal separation on child development. Bowlby provided the initial blueprint of the attachment theory, while Ainsworth provided proof through the strange situation. In the words of Bowlby, life is best organized as a series of daring adventures from a secure base. I think this quote encompasses the heart of attachment theory which is the bond between a primary caregiver, which is hopefully a secure base, and a child. I love this visual as a representation of how important a secure base is. It is through this secure base that children can truly gain independence and feel comfortable exploring their surroundings. This base, this secure base, provides the future foundation for relationships, for love, and so much more. I encourage you to take a moment to take in the image and read all the little words and see how each child is able to explore and feel safe with the secure base always there to support them. As previously mentioned, Ainsworth identified these three main attachment styles or patterns secure, anxious ambivalent, and anxious avoidant. She also discovered the disorganized attachment style, but we will be focusing on these three today. I could talk about attachment styles all day, so I will try to keep this brief. To start, everybody forms attachments. Those attachments can either be secure or insecure. A secure attachment is developed through an attuned caregiver that is sensitive and responsive to an infant's needs. This caregiver loves hanging out with their infant and is constantly there for the infant, allowing the infant to eventually feel comfortable exploring, aiding in the infant's development. This is the caregiver that invests in quality experiences with their little one, knowing that these quality experiences will encourage quality development. 
there are two general forms of insecure attachments, which are anxious ambivalent and anxious avoidant. The anxious ambivalent attachment style develops when a caregiver responds to an infant's needs sometimes and does not respond to their needs other times. This caregiver does not utilize rupture and repair and will not do what is best for the infant always. So sometimes they're doing what's best for the infant, other times they're not, and it's really confusing. And they disregard the infant sometimes. This vast difference in care stresses the infant, causing anxiety during play and general uneasiness and discomfort. The anxious avoidant attachment style develops when the caregiver completely ignores the infant or is consistently responding very angrily towards the infant. This may cause an infant to be unusually independent as well as may lead to behavioral issues down the road. So we have talked a lot about attachment so far. So it's been a lot of information in a short amount of time. So I'm gonna hope, like watch this video. I hope that this will promote your understanding of the strange situation and attachment patterns. Um, I encourage you to really focus on the explanations of the attachment patterns. And if you would like to learn more, I have more videos linked under the additional resources tab on our Canvas module page. But to as simply the strange situation. As an adult, you know when you've formed an attachment with someone, you know how it feels, and you know how to express your feelings in words. However, when it comes to babies and young children, they haven't yet developed these skills, and therefore researchers must turn to more subtle techniques, such as the strange situation, which measures the security of an attachment in one to two year olds. A 20 minute participatory observation, during which the researcher observes the infant's behavioral responses to a series of scenarios. Ainsworth's strange situation includes eight stages, each lasting roughly three minutes. To start with, the mother, baby, and researcher are all together in the room, a small, neutrally colored space with some toys for the baby to play with. The experimenter leaves after around a minute, and the mother and baby are alone for approximately three minutes. In this stage, researchers are watching to see whether the child is confident to explore the new environment, or whether she stays close to the mother. A stranger joins the mother and baby in the room. The researchers record the baby's response to this unfamiliar newcomer who is left alone with the baby when the mother leaves the room. At this stage, the researchers are observing the baby's behavior for signs of separation anxiety. Three minutes later, the mother returns and the researchers observe for the baby's reunion response. The stranger leaves the room. A few minutes more, and the mother leaves the room too, leaving the baby alone for the first time in the experiment. The next person to enter the room is the stranger. And finally, after three minutes, the mother returns and the stranger leaves. All in all, a perfectly strange situation for all involved. So, what were the researchers measuring? When the mother was in the room with the baby, they scored the infant's behavior on four measures. Proximity and contact seeking, contact maintaining, avoidance of proximity and contact, and resistance to contact and comforting. The baby's exploratory behaviors were also recorded as she explored the environment. Ainsworth reported that infants display one of three attachment types. Securely attached infants showed distress when separated from their mother, were avoidant of the stranger when alone, but friendly in the presence of their mother, and were happy when the mother returned from outside the room. 70% of children studied fell into this category. 15% of children demonstrated an ambivalent attachment with their mother. These children showed intense distress when the mother left the room and demonstrated a significant fear of the stranger. When the mother returned to the room, 
ambivalent children approached the mother but rejected contact. Ainsworth reported that a final 15% had an avoidant attachment style. Such infants show no interest when the mother leaves the room and play happily with the stranger. When the mother returns, avoidant children barely seem to notice. So I hope this video kind of helped put into perspective the different attachment styles. Um, if you want to continue watching it, there you can press play on the PowerPoint. It's on the PowerPoint, but we're going to move on for right now. Um, <laughs> I know this has been a lot of information so far, so if you need to pause the video and take a break, please feel free to do so. For our first Padlet question this week, I'm encouraging you to list 10 things you can do as a future educator to promote secure attachments to you throughout the day. Building a trusting relationship with our kiddos is something that we should strive for as caregivers. There are many opportunities you can do or take advantage of in your environment in your, and your interactions that will support the development of secure attachments. When you are ready, scan the QR code and post your answer under the prompt on the Padlet. If scanning the QR code does not work, open the PowerPoint and click on the QR code like this, and it should take you directly to the Padlet. Oh, ah, there we go. Like I mentioned earlier, everyone forms attachments. Even as an adult, you have formed attachments with those around you and any children you interact with for consistent periods of, times, of time. Attachment occurs throughout the lifespan. However, attachment is, as an infant and attachment as an adult do look a little different. Attachment is also flexible. The attachment style you had in childhood may be different now. There are three main adult attachment styles which are secure, avoidant, and insecure slash preoccupied. Securely attached adults value caring relationships, can set healthy boundaries, are emotionally competent, and are more likely to have securely attached children. Avoidantly attached adults commonly dismiss relationships and may think of themselves as lone wolves. They may not see the value in relationships. Insecurely slash preoccupied attached adults may often reflect or think about their early relationship with their now estranged parents. This type of attachment style in adulthood has a higher chance of producing insecurely attached babies. It is important to note that life events and therapy can help adults rework their attachment styles and model of relationships. After discussing infant and toddler attachment styles, I encourage you to pause the video and reflect on what kind of attachment you had with your primary caregiver slash caregivers growing up. How do you think that attachment style has affected your current behaviors? I understand that this is extremely personal and may bring up hard feelings. If you need to stop the lecture at this point, no stress. Understanding our past can help us better understand our current actions, biases, and behaviors. If you want to know more about your current attachment style or styles, this quiz is super awesome. You can just click the link and it will take you to the attachment style test page. It says test, but it's just a quiz. So take a moment to reflect and whenever you are ready, uh, you are free to continue the lecture. Now, for our second Padloop discussion question today, I'm encouraging you to answer the following question. How important is the quality of care that a child receives from its caregiver? Building a trusting and secure relationship is something that an infant toddler, something that infant toddler caregivers strive for when working with children. There are many important things you can do in your environment and in your interactions that will support the development of a secure attachment. And I'm excited and curious to see what your thoughts are. When you are ready, scan the QR code and post your answer under the prompt on the Padlet. If scanning the QR code does not work, click on the QR code and it'll take you directly to the Padlet. Now pause the video and take some time to answer the question and I will I mean, continue recording the lecture when you are ready to come back to it and press play. Now that we have learned about attachment, it is important to discuss what may hinder or affect a secure attachment from forming. The text mentioned these three hindrances, temperament, stress, and maternal depression. 
Temperament is classified by the child's response and reaction to the environment. And there are three main temperament styles. Flexible, which is also known as easygoing, slow to warm up, and feisty, which is also known as active. Infants with flexible temperament styles tend to be predictable in their eat sleep routines. They tend to have an overall pleasant mood and they enter new experiences easily with the support of their secure base. They have moderate emotional reactions and they are minimally sensitive to external stimuli. Slow to warm up infants may withdraw from a new situation or environment, but will adjust slowly to that new situation with the help of a secure base. Infants with a feisty temperament may have e irregular eat sleep routines, may be extremely active, may have intense emotional expressions, may be easily distracted and sensitive to change or stimuli in the environment. And they may have frequent mood change changes. The temperament of the child affects how those around the child react to the child, which may also influence attachment. The temperament of the child may also influence that child's ability to form secure attachments in general. Moving on to the second factor the text mentions, which is stress. There are three main kinds of stress, positive stress, tolerable stress, and toxic stress. Positive stress is brief and mild, and a secure base can help the child cope with that stress. These experiences of positive stress teach the child how to cope with adversity and help the child develop. Tolerable stress is an event of a greater magnitude, such as a parental divorce, natural disaster, 9-11 is a great example of this. Tolerable stress is tolerable because there is a secure base to help the child work through the stress, but it, it is a bigger type of stress than positive stress. Toxic stress is frequent, strong, and prolonged activation of the stress response. This is frequent fight, flight, or freeze without the benefit of a secure base to help mediate the stress. Abuse, neglect, exposure to violence, parental substance abuse, maternal depression, all of these are factors of toxic stress and they cause the brain, the child's brain, to be hypervigilant in searching out danger and restrict, restricts the ability to learn. Stress can either help the brain develop healthily or hinder the development of the brain. Infants need good stress to grow and form relationships, but bad stress can cause infants to perpetually be in fight, flight, or freeze mode, severely impacting their development and ability to form relationships and attachments. Finally, the third factor that might hinder attachment is maternal depression. Maternal depression, also known as postpartum depression, may be a source of toxic stress for a child and has a wide spectrum. Postpartum depression may range from feeling sad and disconnected to the baby to hallucinations that may lead to unsafe actions. Postpartum depression is also a lot more common than people may, may make it sound, make it sound out to be, with 50 to 80% of mamas experiencing some form of postpartum depression. It is so important that caregivers give quality care to those little learners, as well as check up on mom every once in a while. It is typically very difficult for parents to leave their little ones at centers, which may make postpartum depression symptoms even worse. I also want to take a quick moment to note that women who give birth are not the only ones who may experience postpartum depression. Males, as well as fostering or adoptive parents may also experience postpartum depression. Raising a child takes a village, and as caregivers, we have the opportunity to be a supportive village for parents and for children. This is the end of the lecture. Whew. Cheers to those who have made it this far. Today, we have discussed attachment theory, how John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth contributed to our understanding of attachment, why attachment is important to understand and facilitate as caregivers, and three factors that may affect attachment negatively, which include temperament, stress, and maternal depression. You've also been encouraged to reflect on your past and current experiences with attachment and how those experiences affect who you are today. I encourage you to answer this last Padlet discussion question, which asks, what is something new you've learned today? I'm looking forward to reading all your responses on the Padlet. And if you would like to discuss attachment further, we will have a group meeting on Wednesday at 6.15 p.m.
If you cannot make it to the group meeting, email me and we can set up a time to chat about attachment or anything else that you may have questions, comments, or concerns on. That is all for now. And you are one, lect one lecture closer to achieving your goals. Woohoo! Have a fabulous week.